Hey, my name is Janelle, and I'm part of the team here at Rentac Direct, and I'm going to walk you through setting up and using the core tools in your new account. All new accounts are equipped with the built-in tutorial you see here. If you do not see this when you log into your account, you're able to reactivate it. And PM accounts will have six setup steps to work through, while our pro clients will have four. We'll go through each of these initial setup steps together and review the details that are needed. The outline you see presented here is the recommended order of operations for adding data into your account, as many steps rely on the previous for ideal setup. So if you add details out of order, you risk creating more work for yourself later, and we really want to help you avoid that if at all possible. So if you've already added data out of order and you want to start over, you can easily delete information or your client success team can delete all activity in your account. All they need is your written request to make that happen. There are several settings you're able to use to customize your experience in your Rentec Direct account. However, not all of them are crucial to toggle during your initial setup step. So today we're reviewing the settings that are highlighted here, and it's a good idea to click through each of these to become familiar with your options. So down the road, you'll know where to go to utilize all of your tools. Your very first setup step in your account is to review your settings, and we recommend you update your login and password. We also highly recommend you enable two-factor authentication as it provides an extra layer of security just to help protect your data. Additional security settings allow you to decide if your account should be accessible through an anonymous virtual private network or VPN, or if you wanted access from international locations. Both of these options potentially pose security risks, and we want you to take special consideration before enabling those options on your account. Many new clients ask where they can find a copy of their Rentec Direct billing information. Your account and subscription setting is going to offer you details on your preferred payment method, your billing cycle, and if you click on your billing history link, you can even download a copy of your monthly invoice. Accounting defaults are next in line to review in your settings. There are five priority settings I've outlined here, and they apply to all tenants added after this step. If you have different policies for each tenants, these settings can be adjusted individually when a tenant is placed into their rental. Where you're prompted to enter the number of days early to create a rent charge, enter how many days before the rent due date do you want the tenant's charge to appear in their ledger. This setting will also impact automated emails and tenant portals if you plan to use those tools to notify your tenants of new charges. Many clients opt for a few days prior to the due date just to give their tenants a gentle reminder. And if you have a late fee policy, make sure to indicate when rent is late for your rentals. If rent is due on the first of the month and late on the fifth, list a four day grace period. While it's not critical to manage it set up, the income and expense category section offers you the option to view your default accounting categories, as well as the option to add in custom categories. So there are three types of transaction categories. The first one, income. Income categories can be linked to tenants, properties, bank accounts, and owner account transactions. The second one, expense. So expense categories are linked to property, bank account, and owner-related transaction, as these feed into your financial reports. And the last type is what we call other. And the other category is reserved for transactions that don't populate over to income and expense reports. These are basically used for ledger adjustment transactions. With the setting of custom fields that you'll see underneath your setting tabs, unique data fields can be created for storing details about your tenants, your properties, and owners on their setup pages. These fields can also be used in conjunction with the forms tool. By becoming familiar with these default fields in the owner, property, and tenant setup pages, you're able to learn if you want additional categories. And we'll show you those setup pages later in this orientation. While we're on this page, take a note of the icon on the right side that looks like a pencil and a paper. By clicking on this icon, you're able to edit the data in 
that particular area of the program. And you're going to notice the same icon throughout your Rentec Direct account. So keep in mind, that's for editing. The next setup step after managing your program settings is to add in bank accounts that you're going to be using to manage your rentals. And you'll do this in your accounts page. Before we look at the bank account setup page, I want to point out the account we refer to as undeposited funds and explain why is your account preloaded with this bank account. So undeposited funds is an account for recording tenant rent payments if you would like to create and reflect bank deposits in your program. So using this account as the default income account when you're setting up your properties and recording your tenant payments just ensures your bank account ledgers will mimic what happens in your true bank account. It just makes reconciliation much easier down the road. And for more information on this tool, read the Undeposited Funds Knowledge Base article. You're able to add in as many bank accounts into your Rentec account as you desire. After clicking Add an Account, all that is absolutely necessary on the bank account setup page is the account name. If you have questions about the fields in this page, click on the question marks as we provide you an explanation right in that page. By adding in your bank accounts now, later you'll be able to tie them to each property you add. By doing that, it ensures your income and expense transactions are recorded automatically in the appropriate bank ledger. And it saves you from having to manually link the account into each transaction. For a bit of clarification, this step does not automatically sync your Rentec account to your actual bank account. Rather, it's simply providing you a bank account bookkeeping ledger. Should you wish to activate a bank account for electronic payments, that is going to be an additional step and it's going to be handled under your settings tab. We have separate instructions for handling easy pay setup and they can be found on your summary page in the built-in tutorial. To edit the details on your bank account, click on the menu either by right clicking or a long click on the bank account name or you can use the menu icon on the right side of the screen. To open the bank account ledger to view all the transactions that you have linked to the bank account, click on the balance in the right column. When you're adding in your bank accounts, unless they're brand new accounts, you'll want to enter a starting balance that all future income and expense transactions will pull off of. And to do this, click on the bank account balance in the accounts page and use the update balance button at the top of the page. When setting a beginning balance for your bank account, choose the same day across your Rentec Direct program for begin dates. Meaning, if you want to reflect income and expenses for the entire year, list the starting balance as it was on your bank statement on December 31st and then begin posting all charges for your properties and all payments from your tenants beginning January 1st. After adding your bank accounts, if you're working in the PM version of Rentec, it's time to add in the property owners that you manage for. Property owners are added in under the account page, just like bank accounts were added. The only required property owner information is the owner's name. If you're managing a property that has a group of property owners, list the entity's name and the primary contact in the owner field as only one property owner can be assigned per property. You'll notice in the owner setup page an option to enable the owner's portal. And we recommend you do this step when you're ready for the property owner to see the data you've entered for the rental property as you're able to have an automated email sent to them that contains their username and password. At any time, you're able to view an owner's portal by using the Login as Owner button on this page. Here we have a sample owner portal. Notice the custom brand in the upper left corner and you're able to add in your own logo to your program underneath your settings page in the branding section. The program default settings are going to allow you to enable or disable sharing maintenance requests or reports in the owner portal. And you will also be able to decide with each maintenance request 
and added file and added attachment if you want to share it to the property owner's portal. We've created a sample owner portal welcome letter for you to introduce your Rentec Direct tools to your property owners and a link to this letter can be found in the knowledge base. For Rentec PM clients, after you add in your property owners, be sure to add in any managers connected to your account so that you're able to link them to the properties they manage for you. So both pro and PM clients are able to add unlimited sub-users, but only PM accounts have the option to designate a sub-user as a manager. So property managers can also be enabled as a sub-user of your Rentec Direct account. You'll be able to set their specific user permissions as well as access permissions related to VPN or international access. And you can also view when they last logged into your account. After you've added the property manager, you'll have the option to edit their details by clicking on that pencil and paper icon. Or if you need to delete them, just click on the red X. By clicking on the link in the permissions column, you will be able to edit their specific user permissions. And there are many user permission options for you to set for each user, and these are just based on your preferences. If you're ever in doubt about how a setting is going to affect a sub-user, just log in as the sub-user to test their permissions, or you can reach out to your program advisor or your client success team for help. Now that you've added your settings, property owners, bank accounts, and managers, you're ready to add in your properties. The areas outlined in red on this page are isolated for Rentec PM clients. When you're adding in details for each property, know that the only requirement is the property name. However, you're going to save yourself a lot of repeat work if you complete as many details on the setup page as you intend to track. If you have a single expense that's tied to a specific property and you're ready to record it, head to the property tab and click on the red dollar sign. If you want to view the property's accounting ledger and all the transactions, click on the balance in the right column. And once in the property ledger, you're able to isolate a date range or search for specific transaction details. You'll notice in this ledger, you can also post property income or expenses and download your ledger in a CSV file if you want to use it outside of your program. And if you have a split expense to record that's attached to more than one property or more than one unit or has different transaction types, you're going to want to post these types of expenses in the accounts page through the bank account. When recording a property expense, be sure to complete each field in the transaction. You'll notice options for making a recurring or depreciable expense, or you can add in an attachment. If you're working in the PM version, you'll also be able to share attachments to an owner portal. After your property has been added, you are ready to move your tenant into their rental. Follow the link in the property tab to place your tenant. If you have more than one tenant renting your rental, follow this step a second time by clicking on the place new tenant link below the first tenant's name. When placing secondary tenants, you're going to have an option to group them together with shared terms and shared rental charges, or you can keep them separate with separate terms and separate rental charges. The roommate tool is a great way to track tenants that are sharing space, but also those that are on housing assistance as it creates profiles for each entity tied to the rental. Once you click the button to place your tenant into the rental, you'll see this screen pop up. And as you're onboarding new tenants into your account, you'll choose the option of enter new tenant. If you already added the tenant in through the tenant tab for some reason, you can select the option of use existing tenants. Your accounting and property default settings are carrying over to establish rent and security deposit charges, as well as those invoicing and late fee structures that you set under your accounting default. The prorate first month box is checked by default, and this creates a rent billing cycle on the first of each month. And if you uncheck this box, you're going to be creating a rent billing date that matches the move-in date. So be cautious. Just keep it checked if rent is due on the first. So the move-in date is when the tenant took 
physical occupancy of the rental. So this could be a historical date. And the begin date is where you're going to list when the tenant rent charges are going to start in the tenant ledger in Rentec. After placing the tenant, you're going to have the opportunity to record any payments that they have made. The only detail required to add a tenant is their name, and you can easily come back to this page at any time to add more details about your tenant. You'll find the edit tenant option in that tenant menu. Helpful tools found on the tenant page include the option to activate automated emails and the option to activate the tenant portal. Just like the owner portal, you have a quick link to log into the tenant portal at any time. The tenant portal provides valuable real-time information to your tenants, saving you and your tenants time. Through your settings, you decide if your tenants are able to submit maintenance requests or pay rent electronically or purchase renter's insurance through their portal. We have a welcome letter for you to introduce portals to your tenants, and this can be found in the knowledge base. Posting a tenant payment or charge is handled through the tenant tab. Quick links are located below the tenant's ledger balance and can also be found in the tenant menu and within the tenant's ledger. When posting a tenant payment, you have options to adjust the default date, which is useful for recording historical payments. If you set a default income account for the property, Notice it auto-populates into the transaction. Also notice you can make an attachment to a tenant transaction. And if you've set up a management fee that is to be based on rent payments, it is going to automatically calculate in post. You can also disable this fee by deselecting the box. If you're recording different types of payments, use the split transaction tool. A tenant's security deposit activity is stored in a separate ledger and it's accessed inside the tenant's standard ledger. To find it, first click on the tenant's regular ledger balance and follow the button at the top that indicates on deposit. When in the tenant security deposit ledger, notice the original deposit charge that was created when you first placed your tenant. And to manage the tenant deposit, use the options found in the lower left. To print a copy of the deposit ledger, use the icon in the upper right. So we've covered our core account setup steps and you're ready to get started in your Rentec Direct account. Remember, follow your setup steps in the order presented here for optimal results. And if you'd like to review a sample mock account, follow the link here. To review written setup instructions, use the Quick Start Guide. To move to advanced setup steps, such as setting up your website, tenant screening, or electronic payment processing, follow the links in the lower section of your tutorial. However you learn best, we have a multitude of resources available for you. The Rentec Direct Knowledge Base contains links to written instructions and training videos, and we provide you ongoing education through educational webinars. And you can find links to register through the education section of the Rentec Direct blog. And remember where you can find your built-in knowledge base and support tools. All Pro and PM clients receive excellent US-based support directly from the Rentec Direct team. Don't hesitate to reach out to us. We're here to help.